Be patient, grow daily. By single. This is really how I built Kev on stage. Damn. It was it was some little bit of video. I want y'all to trust in the process. Be patient, grow daily. By single. Beat um, all uh, odds. Uh, shout out to uh, Greg Noir. Greg Noir. Uh, he takes he takes the good pictures. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Okay. Right, the good so. pictures. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast Finger. episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Smash that subscribe button to the Kev on Stage Studio or Patreon or both. But if you can't do both. Hit the app. Please get the beep, app. Beep. I just want to let y'all know how it works. It's going to be both ass. It's yeah, not, get the app. Well, what should I do? Get the app. If please. you can only do one, please. get the app because you can get the you're going to get all the content, all the everything, everything, everything. Yes. The the Patreon is for the community. Yes. Okay, this is our friends. They're watching live. There's a Discord. There's a pre-order for merch that's likely uh will be $25 more expensive if you ain't on Patreon. Uh, that's where our, that's where our close friends are. Yeah. Okay. But I understand, guys. Everybody ain't got eight nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you can only do one, get the app. Get the app. Okay? The app is going to help a lot of people. I mean, it all works together. We, all, all the money goes to the same. All thing. things work together. All Come on. Yeah. 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 Oh, come so, on. That was Chris. You heard it? That was Chris. That was a Chris walk down. There was no stumble. <laughs> Not now one. Oh. Are we jumping into it or do you we have an announcement? jumping into it. Um, here's the thing. The curious case of Gorilla Glue Girl. Oh, now, my God. My here's God. the interesting thing. We actually covered this on the bonus episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. But since then, there have been some developments. Mm-hmm. And I felt like it was only right to come back to, to, it. Come back to mm-hmm. it. So if you're not aware, Gorilla Glue Girl... Her name is Tessica something. Tessica Brown. Tessica Brown, 40 years old from Louisiana. Yeah, we can hear it. You can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. She put Gorilla Glue, which is commercial... Uh, industrial, industrial strength, industrial strength adhesive. adhesive. Yeah. Industrial Hair was laid though. I know. I knew you yeah. meant industrial. I was here for you, friend. Okay. Industrial strength adhesive. <laughs> I have used Gorilla Glue when in my first apartment, mm-hmm. the couch, the wood broke. Mm-hmm. You put mm-hmm. Gorilla Glue on. A little bit of water, hold it in there for like five minutes, yeah. and it was like new. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. So she put that on her head, and she had a slick pony, and she went to wash it out for a month, t- 10, 12 times over a month. That and thing. It's been a and month? I thought, literally, listen, she just, I thought she just... It, that's what I had thought, too. And then I listened to that audio that oh, you sent, yeah. and when she said a month, because my, my whole thought was, was when I saw the video, I was like, you know what? Just she just gonna have to wait for uh like a month for her to get some new growth and then right. shave it off. That's right. what I thought. That's what I thought too. But if that video she made is from a month of having that, it is that gorilla glue has sealed up. And that's my fear right now because we listened to an uh, interview yesterday with her on it, and that's what made me bring it up because she answered some questions. My things like why don't you just shave it off? And she says she can't get a razor. Or Under. clippers, uh, like it's like another layer of of skin, yeah. like a uh, skin, yeah. right? So my fear now is that the dog on follicles is is clogged up. They clogged up. So let's back up because oh. she's an interesting case. It was like she says she went on the internet because she had tried everything. Mm-hmm. All her people in Louisiana, she had no idea, um, and. Uh, she wanted help. At first, the internet was laughing at her. Yeah. By and large. Oh, yeah. Everybody had a good time. Ah, uh, hee hee ha ha ha. Hee 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 hee. As a comedian, I re- part of our job is to make the right jokes at the right time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the tide changed a little bit. Mm-hmm. The tide in her story has changed a lot. Yeah. The tide changed a little bit. Over the weekend, she went to the hospital. Yeah. There's a picture of her laying down. Uh, if you could put it right here, Joshy. A picture of her laying down. Whew. At the hospital, in a in a, a nurse or a doctor uh, is trying to attend to her in some way. Mm. <laughs> okay, I was laughing because Josh accidentally flipped it to his whole face in the full screen. <laughs> 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 He's, He's like, like, "You see me." <laughs> so Ty changed. They were like, "Oh, I feel bad for her because mm-hmm. she can't get it off." Yeah, right. So then the tie changed again for her because she has a GoFundMe. That was a 15 horner. What's she going to do with that? And By lace know. fronts? I don't know. I, I, okay, so some people, the, the, the tide changed. It was like, we got to help her. You know, who among us have not made silly mistakes? Oof. You know what I'm saying? It's a black woman. Some uh-huh. of my followers like, I get it. We, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I want to help her. Y'all feel how you feel. I want to help. Yeah. Um. 
So her GoFundMe, at last I checked, was over nine grand. Yeah, it's at okay. thirteen. She I do believe. Buy stocking really yeah. cool. it's at thirteen thousand. Is it really at thirteen thousand? Yeah. Thirteen mm-hmm. bands. That's what somebody just said on here. I wonder if that's wow. going to cover the uh, expenses, though. Probably not. If she okay. don't have insurance, but I'm assuming she don't have insurance. That's what people said. But she only been to the hospital once, so yeah. it's not going to be a thirteen thousand dollar bill. No. And nobody says she doesn't have insurance. It was just maybe she doesn't have insurance. Uh huh. Okay. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. So then, uh, she got verified on Instagram. Right. I think when I last checked, she had she like got a blue check. <laughs> Bro, blue she gets she better get a brand deal, right? And then she added management to her bio. Stop Jesus, it. stop! <laughs> Serious, it. I'm just telling you what I know. Just telling you what I know. <laughs> then it came out that sources close to her say she's considering uh, suing Gorilla suing Glue. Uh-huh. and at that because Gorilla Glue hadn't said nothing. Uh huh. But when them at the same time, them sources said. She's considering suing them. Gorilla Glue put out a statement that was like, hey, we feel bad for you. We are sorry this happened to you. We are glad you're getting, you know, medical services. However, mm-hmm. Gorilla Glue says. Clearly states. Don't put it on your hair. I mean, don't put it on your skin, mm-hmm. eyes, or clothing. Yeah. Okay. So somebody on Twitter, some uh, black lawyer was like, but it doesn't say don't put it on your hair. Therefore, it is confusing to my client, even though he's not her lawyer. <laughs> So I think she gets that though, because this the same situation. I don't know if it was like a big lawsuit or if it was just a rumor, but uh, with the girl spilling coffee from exactly McDonald's, the first it's thing the I same exact of. case. But well, well, here's no, the problem with that though. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I must say no. The difference I think with the McDonald's one is is that they sh- there's no reason to serve coffee that hot. Oh, that's it is right. not edible in, right. <laughs> to that's anyone true. at that temperature. Gorilla Glue was uh, Gorilla Glue <laughs> <Tough. Thank you. laughs> <laughs> Monkey Glue uh, still put an R there is not meant for any type of human contact right. at all. She completely went outside of. Now this is not to say I actually am pained for her. The thought of the fact that the hair will not grow up out of her head yeah. like, like once she said that it had been a month I was like God, like, yeah. like you really at imp- impasse. Is that the right word? Empath, empathy. No, like impasse. You feel like empath- where you can't go nowhere oh, else. Impasse. Okay, I did say it right. All right, praise God. I was completely. Um, but I was confused on why Gorilla Glue didn't say anything before. Now, like, why they didn't reach out to her and be like, "Okay, here's some things you can try." I bet they were just like. What? We, how, why you did They're that? They're in the room. Uh, and you know what? They me. probably would have been more liable for lawsuit if they did reach out. But a part of me is just like. Yeah. Mm. So that's what the guy was saying. The guy on Twitter who was kind of going low key viral was like, you're liable because it didn't say hair. Right. And apparently your hair is an extension of your skin. It grows everywhere except like the palm of your hand. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I digress. Here's where it's going to be hard to win a lawsuit for her. In the radio interview that we listened to. Okay. She says, I did it on purpose. Oh, no. Because I thought I could wash it out. Yeah. She doesn't say it was an accident. I mean, I'm not, this is not a legend. This is I, her words say, Mm-mm. I ran out of this. I used this on purpose mm-hmm. because I thought I could wash it out. Mm. Now, if you're trying to win a lawsuit, which sources say, we don't know. Sources. We don't know. We're not. Right. JD if you're trying certified. to win a lawsuit, I think it would be very hard anyway. Uh, but it's even harder if you are on record of saying that you did it on purpose. Mm. It's going to be tough to sell. And it's going to be tough to sell. That it, it don't say this, but I, one could argue that saying not on your hair, skin, or clothing, you right. know. Right. You yeah. Because you could say, it don't say don't eat it. Like out of all the glues to try, like I don't, yeah. like Elmer's. Would have been where I would have thought to have gone. Elmer's, you know, you could just peel I it used off. To do that as you a just child. put it on that was your head fun. and Great peel time. it off. Yeah. Feel a lot of class time. But you know what? I do feel like as black folk, we be using glue where it's not supposed to be used. I remember the first time I got my individual lashes done, they used hair glue. That black hair glue. This is what happens when you get individual lashes for twenty five dollars because it should cost a hundred and something. And I remember not being able to get them off. And by the end of it, when they finally came off, I had maybe two natural hair lashes left in my eyes. I looked like the doll from the uh, Rugrats that Angelica used to carry around. Uh, Cynthia? <laughs> I looked like with Cynthia. The, with the three hairs yes. and the rest was out here? That is what my eyelashes look like. Like Cynthia's head. 
Like Cynthia said, and that learned my lesson right there. I learned my lesson right there. It was a thing of adhesives are not to be played with. They're supposed to be used where they're supposed to be used yeah. and then not used where they're not supposed to be used. Yeah. So I don't know why she tried to use the strongest. I don't. While, yes, she did it on purpose. I don't obviously think she thought this was going to be the outcome. Yeah. I, and if you haven't used Gorilla Glue, you, you might not know. Water is what helps it bond stronger. Mm-hmm. So since every time she was washing her hair, yeah. she was reinforcing that. Yeah. You know, but Gorilla Glue, after that first 10 minutes... That thing is set. Yeah, it's it's not moving. You're you're done. It's it's not going nowhere. And the hearing her saying the chemical they put on her head was burning her. I like know. uh and a, a correction, the audience let me know, Patreon let me know that um Gorilla Glue did reach out to her with suggestions. Oh, they did? Yeah. I wonder why she didn't mention that in the interview. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so here's the thing. People are divided. Mm. There's one, I don't want to say half, but there's a large contingent that are, these are not my words. These are not my words. These are not my words. <laughs> Girl, you're dumb. Mm-hmm. Girl, she even said that. It was like, oh, internet was calling her stupid. That was hurtful. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what you get. You mm. deserve this. Mm. You ain't going to get nothing. Mm. What you, you, you scamming. You set up the gorilla. I mean, the, the GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. That ain't our fault. And also, if you gave to her, you're dumb. Mm. <laughs> because she's scamming. Or not scamming, but like, I don't want to say scamming, but like, why should you be giving to her? Right. Is is that camp thought. Mm. And then on the other side, there's who cares? Protect black women. This is our sister. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to donate to her. Quieter audiences on the second half. Uh, Where do you stand, Kevin? You know, I still. Where do you stand? I'm uh, on the Lord's side. Hey, go on. Hey, he's on the Lord's side. Yeah. Here's where I stand. Tell me. The internet is a fickle place, mm-hmm. right? The yeah. tide can change ever so greatly. Yeah. I laughed at first, mm-hmm. like everyone. I then felt sorry for her. Yeah. Um, I. Don't think she will win a lawsuit. No. I think she probably, like you said, had no idea it could ever get this bad. Yeah. Probably feels dumb. I'd hate to have the whole world laughing at me mm. if, you know, for being dumb. It's comedy special would be great. Um, <laughs> I understand the people who feel obliged to help her. They're like, man, we, we, I mean, who among us? Yeah. I get it. I have not yet donated. Mm-hmm. I don't feel as strongly as to, you know, jump give, in. Yet, give you your money. You know, uh, if she could flip. Here's the thing about the Internet. I'm a for people turning pain into profit. Uh-huh. You know I, mean? I agree. If she could flip it into some brand deals, edge control, wig companies. Uh huh. Uh huh. That would be my best case scenario. OK. You know, like for me, I would want her. I don't want to see people in pain. No, I don't either. It didn't, when she made her first video, she didn't mention nothing about pain. I think that's why people laugh. Mm-hmm. But when she was in the hospital, they said they were doing that stuff. It was burning my scalp. And I'm paying. It. Things ain't no longer funny when you know right. a person hurting for real. Right. And I'm just like, you know, ah, I, feel, I, I feel bad for her. That's probably my honest oh, feeling uh-huh. at this point. Overall, I feel bad for her. Yeah. I feel like she's not going to win that lawsuit. That 9K, you'd be better off starting the LLC. <laughs> Yes, because if you if you if you you gonna lose that lawsuit, baby. Yeah, that night you gonna lose that. I don't Use think that nine or thirteen. You said it was. Yeah, I think she's at thirteen now. I would say take that, and that's the best thing you gonna get out of it. I don't want to see you go up against Gorilla Glue and just waste that thirteen. I and think and at also, I be settlement though. I don't. I don't think they would even have to do that. If they did, they probably would do it for favor people in people's eyes. But I don't think anybody. Think, I don't think most people think Gorilla Glue's at fault at all. Right. Even if you don't know what it is, and Gorilla's not Gorilla Glue, as a as a consumer, it is your responsibility. Most would argue, this is for what? It's right there on the front and on yeah. the back. It don't have no picture of a new human. It's like appliances. Like I was looking at it. It's appliances, wood stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it's not even a. Uh, it ain't sold nowhere near the thing. I heard she got it off Amazon. So I don't know if this is true, but somebody said she got it off Amazon. That's why she was confused, uh, or she already had it in her house. It, I, these, I, I can't even confirm or deny those allegations. I I definitely feel bad for her. I too 
had a change of heart because I thought that, like I said, I thought, okay, she's just going to have to wait until her hair grows out and then she'll have to cut it off. Being someone who has lost hair before in great amounts, I know, especially as black women, we can be very attached to our hair. Oh, for sure. So this is past being attached to her hair. This is her skin now. We need to go on past hair. Yeah. Her skin is more than likely going to be um, damaged for the rest of her life. So like that type of stuff, like I do feel like uh, psychologically past the internet, like she also didn't have to put this on the internet. So the whole world did not have to be laughing well, at her. Thing. She said, I, I did it because I didn't know what else to do. I had asked everybody I knew. I thought somebody but, might give me a thing that might work. You remember they said, but did you reach out to Gorilla mm -hmm. Glue? And she was like, no, I had not. <laughs> I was like, there, there was so many. The people. And so instead, she's reaching out to her mama and her auntie and they over there. Put put vinegar in your hair. Put baby piss in your hair. <laughs> put, put honey in your hair. And actually, honey is good for a lot of things, but not getting Gorilla Glue okay. out of your head. But it is okay. great for shopping. We all shop online. And we all seen that promo code feel that taunts us at checkout. When you just like a coupon, do I have a coupon? Ah! Ah! But thanks to Honey, mainly searching for coupon codes is the thing of a past. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, and they range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. So, Kev, mm -hmm. uh, we already heard about you and Melissa being at odds because you had 50 million boxes at the dough. Yeah. I'm sure. 90% uh, uh, of them boxes, we saved money with, honey. You better have. Because it's a set it and forget it type of thing. <laughs> I don't got to remember. You, you put it into your browser, it, it remembers for you. Right. You right. know, and I, it's just like my shopper's card at Ralph's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to think. I don't got to check which graham crackers is good. Swipe my card, price drop, price drop, price boop, drop. Boop, 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 boop. And when you're saving 20 and 30% on things, it's like you you don't, that's the type of money that you don't want to throw away. Right. You want to be able to keep that stuff in your bank account. Mm. And Honey lets you do that. So this is how it works. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons. It can find for that site if Honey finds a working coupon. You'll watch the prices drop. So this is what we want you to do. If you don't already have honey, you can be you will be straight yeah. up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installed in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid in supporting this podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash SK. SK. That's joinhoney.com slash SK. SK. Yeah. Do you have any more thoughts on Gorilla Goo Girl? No, I just, uh, I just really, I do feel for her. And she will be in my prayers because I would probably be having a, if I were her, I'd be having a panic attack. Listen, right about I now. lost my hair lime. Yeah. And black men, listen, it, I mean, this was, I don't, I don't know who to blame. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to blame Gorilla Glue. But the thing that sucks about going bald, you... <laughs> It happens so slow, man. Mm -hmm. You get out of the barber chair, you be like, "Did you you fade me like that?" <laughs> what was it? Like, what happened right there? Because I, I I start going here first. Mm -hmm. It was up. Yeah, it was like he was just tapering me in. I said, I, "What happened?" Yeah, yeah, I got that coldy. Yeah, the magneto. Yeah. yeah, I got that coldy, man. It was like I, I got the beginning of a nice neighborhood. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't have because yeah, when I was young, I had boom, boom here, right. Cause then what happened? The it couldn't go back here because this was like, what if we just go back? <laughs> so then it was just it was coldy, and then it was straight down. Yeah, and that wasn't nobody like that. Nobody. So what I did to hide it for a little bit, I said, well, just fade me out, mm. fade it high, keep it up the top. Yeah, there you go, there you go. I like, see what you what yeah, your thoughts were. I was like, let me trick him uh -huh. so it don't go down to you, but it, you don't Boom. see that. But then this was like, well, what if I keep going back? L Listen. Then the fade. And then I knew my bar. I said, what are you, what are you lining up here for? Why are you, doing <laughs> Why are you up there? <laughs> Listen, women who have kids go through the same thing, Kevin. Going bald? Go, we lose our edges when we have oh, kids. I, I heard about that. Oh, my gosh. It just leaves us like a waistline. It just says, ah, bye, <laughs> bye, bye, everybody. It's the but worst. I thought that prenatal would help your hair grow. Yes, you get your hair grows while you're pregnant, and then after you have the baby, your hair sheds in oh. your edges. And I remember after having Amar, 
I, because my hair was grew back, my alopecia had went dormant, and my hair was just like, ah! and then I washed my scalp real good and scrubbed it, and all that stuff said, bye, <laughs> I pulled my hair back, and I was like, ah! I mean, you could just put a whole hand but right here between my forehead and where my hair started. I mean, it's growing back. I got the little... I got the little curly curves right here. But yeah, I get it. It's not a it's not a game. Marcus's hairline started doing cursive, so he had to cut it. <laughs> it looked like his signature. It was like Marcus Anthony Changsland. And he said, I will not. He said, I will not be one of these men that hold on for too long. Listen, I I, I got up out of there. Well, I mean, it's a tough when you look in the mirror after a fresh cut, it ain't fresh. <laughs> right. And I'd be looking at people like I remember my boy in, in uh, North Carolina. He he moved from Washington and his hairline stayed in Washington, mm -hmm. and um, he didn't have no close friends mm. in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we was in North Carolina, had a show, and he pulled up, mm -hmm. and he was here. Oh no! I the top of the Maybach. <laughs> the top of the Maybach. <laughs> so we, I remember my brother did it. My brother just was like, hey. He tapped him on the shoulder. He said, it's time. <laughs> he didn't even say nothing. He said, it's time. It's time. He was like, yeah, I, I knew it. Nobody would tell me straight up. <laughs> he had the Jewish boy dreidel, the little thing, the little doily that they the wear on the back. The yarmulke. There we go. He just he had the yarmulke. Had, nobody had told him in love. Mm. And then he'd been bald ever since. That's mm. a tough thing, man. And mm. I didn't even have the luxury of waves. Oh, you didn't have. Oh, I didn't even have three sixty. People had three sixty. My boy, and he had three sixty waves, mm. and then his hairline waved. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Good to see you. Bye bye. <laughs> Jay bye -bye. had waves. I didn't get the best of both worlds. I didn't even get the three sixty. That's all right, but you got your beard and the bald. And luckily, bald is in for dudes. Women, we we don't have that. Bald. Like uh, if our hair is acting up mm. in that way. There hasn't been a strong enough like movement. Of course, there are women who are very confident, yeah. and comfortable, and are able to Pussy, wear. Uh, Danny Guetta. From yeah, 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 you yeah. Know what I'm about? Uh huh. Um, that are able to wear their hair bald and be okay with being one of the only. Yeah. But like, as far as in bald men, there is a whole movement of bald and bearded. Like people love it. That's not the case for women. Just bald and lashed. Like there's not like a thing where. <laughs> Because I had to contemplate. I had contemplated having to shave off. When I started losing a lot of hair, I was like. I saw your YouTube video. I said, Angel. You see? You see? I lost a lot of hair. You was gone. Gone. So gone. And you picked a thumbnail you, that one. You, 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 you. Yes. I, yeah, you I picked was, the thumbnail and was like, oh, y'all going to get in this Oh, y'all going to listen. Y'all think when I said I had alopecia, I was playing? Oh, no. Angel had. I mean, it was the size of like this. These two hands just missing. It was the rock. <laughs> I was just rock. like, we just going to keep pulling this high bun up <laughs> until I can't do this no more. Was yeah. your confidence shaking a little bit? Um, No. I mean, it was like sad. But I, the things that you notice when you're losing hair, when people would have like cornrows, I was like, oh, you could just part your hair all the way from the front to the back of your head. And there's hair all the way. There's hair all the way down. That's amazing. I just... <laughs> I wish I could do that one day. <laughs> That's how little kids ask for food. I, I, I had never had chicken nuggets that looked like that. I, that's what Kelly does. Uh, I, we had ice cream the other day, and she was like, I, I like ice cream. I wish I could have a spoon. <laughs> that's a, I will be looking at women with cornrows just like, oh, look at that. Like, um. That's so nice. But it did keep me from, I stopped letting anybody do my hair. I was like, only me? Because I having to explain. Okay, then listen, you're going to get in here and all of a sudden be like, where did everything go? Yeah. We had a fire sale and uh, and all the hair left. Uh, so every, it was guess everything, <laughs> everything must go, apparently. And uh, yeah. No, I quickly, I had maybe two really tough moments where I cried about it. But I was just like, this is the most vain thing ever. Vain? Was, why well because like there are people fighting cancer there are people fighting like mm. truly uh, um, uh, while well, alopecia is is incurable there are people fighting things that are incurable and deadly and so yeah. I, that was a constant reminder in my head of angel yeah. there are lace fronts galore in this world and if you want you could rock lace fronts and no one would ever know if that was the case the for you yeah i was like but there are people who 
truly have lost their, you know, sight that used to be able to see. I'd rather lose hair than to lose my sight mm, or to lose my listen, hearing. So, uh, yeah, that's where perspective I was. is often really good in life. Yes, because you be you be justified in your stuff, but then perspective be like, but also hush. Yeah, but also, but you know also, shut but the you heck be up. valid. <laughs> You'd be valid, but then you'd be like, but it ain't that bad. Yeah. Because so. I'd be sometimes like, I need to be reminded of where I come from and where I'm going. Because I, I I couldn't travel last year just for myself. Mm-hmm. I, I went here in last year. Then also, I was like, boy, hush. Because <laughs> you also went to London and 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 uh, France and yeah. and Spain and Amsterdam and Japan in one year. Man. And Mexico. Well, okay. Well, then, yeah. So hush. Uh, and, and Puerto Rico. You know where I went? Kentucky. So, yeah. <laughs> Yep, you there will be no I was like that's enough places. You just spread these out one per year. That's what most people they get that not all in one lifetime. Just I, FYI, that's why I be saying shut up to myself. Yeah, we have to sometimes. I just like this is not to. I definitely try to allow myself to have valid feelings and being someone. It probably wouldn't have been so bad, but hair has always been a part of my identity. I've always had a lot of hair. I've always had when you hair. Had a, you had that picture when you was young with the two angels. You had two hairstyles in one. You had so much hair. You were like do this on here, and then it's wavy at the bottom. Listen, once we, uh, I repeat, when people got mad at that statement, oh, so black women don't grow hair? No, hairstylists used to cut and burn the heck out of our hair <laughs> so that anytime we got some length, it would get cut out. And so once I figured that out, and it was like, let me just not be going to hairstylists all the time. My yeah. hair started growing. I was like, yes. Yeah. So I've always been known to have a lot of hair. So to have that taken from me, I was like, oh, God, what am, What are you trying to teach me? What did I do? That's when you know you're going through it. You gotta ask, <laughs> God, what are you trying to teach me? Because obviously, there have, surely there's a lesson in here there's somewhere. There's got to be a lesson. You know, because they say in church, now listen, in the school, amen. <laughs> <laughs> they give me the lesson and then the test. Now watch this. Watch this. God give you the test and then the lesson. Hey. Out, <laughs> you're going through and you don't let go. You're still in the test. Yeah. And then he going to tell me. Listen, preachers feel good when you broke. Oh, you're yeah. going to take all that and apply. Uh- <laughs> you don't know how many breakthroughs I try to get for bills. Ah, <laughs> uh, check my balance. Three seventeen still, because they used to say you gotta praise them with everything you got. Oh yeah. So when my situation didn't change, I said, "Did I leave something? <laughs> I left something." Like, <laughs> <laughs> promise, the Lord, this is everything. Ah, I have nothing else, Lord. I give it everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely understand. Um. But yeah, no, I was like, there's a lesson. I must have talked bad about somebody. And I'm evil sorry. Eye, Josh. <laughs> that evil eye, Josh. I said, whoever it was, God, I am so sorry. Mm, so sorry, Lord. I, I repent. But yeah, no. Um, but I so back to Gorilla Glue Girl. Yeah. I hope that there's an answer and that she comes out as unharmed as possible and that she does learn a lesson from this. Uh, because while it definitely was ignorance. I won't just call her dumb. Yeah. It was ignorant as all get out, though. Um, I don't want to like see ignorance her. Ignorance plus underestimation. Mm-hmm. Because maybe it's her first experience with Gorilla Glue and she had not known. Yeah. And here's the thing about the internet that I realize. This is actually an interesting case for it. Mm-hmm. First of all, everyone on the internet is an expert on everything. No. Oh, <laughs> yes. Everyone's a chemist who works at Gorilla Glue, mm. who specializes in bonding agents. But really, it's just the people who, who know be loud. Yeah. Because, I mean, I I don't, I got to actually, I'm, keep your, not keep your distance. Tony, Tony Baker. Baker. Tony Baker friends. friends. I got a whole joke about the internet that I've been working on, really excited about. Good. So please pull up to this. Quick aside, Kevin on stage, the comedian, is growing the most. Ooh, exponentially. In a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even saying I'm killing every time. You're but this amazing. is reminding me when I was but a young comedian, Nate Jackson Super Funny Comedy Room or a comedy show, there's a lot of regulars. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, y'all not going to come and get the same show. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm trying this. I'm trying that. Some days I did great. Some days I bombed. But a lot of good jokes came from that. Like, if I'm going to see the same people, you're going to get something new. Yeah. So many of the Patreon stage crew specifically, they be pulling up to keep your distance and Tony every time. Mm-hmm. And the audience in the show physically mm-hmm. 
A lot of the same people. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of people who don't be doing a whole bunch. People get tested. A couple good laughers. Uh huh. Can't give them the same show either. Mm-hmm. So what that mean? New jokes. Yeah. Every time, especially Tony's show. So when I go back out, I think about throwing my whole set out from the last time I was on tour. Good. I'm thinking Ooh. about throwing it all out, man. Oh, you're then talking crazy, kid. Why not? Crazy, on, why, not? why not? Let me start it over from scratch. I have never in my switch. entire career as a STEM comedian. <laughs> Never <laughs> created this much material. Probably, maybe since I was fresh in. Uh huh. You know what I mean. I never. Cause I'm not going to tour, man. Get that set, that 45. Go. Yeah. Tweet tag, but not like I'm gonna introduce a new joke. A whole new. Like, you yeah. always thinking of like if I get this perfect, I can t- turn it into an hour mm-hmm. tape it. So yeah, you don't yeah. want to like. You want to get it good. Yeah. But this, I'm like, bro. And also, we're in a time in our life where after the pandemic subsides, them jokes ain't going to be nothing anyway. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm like, Might as well. throw caution to the wind. So, but, but anyway, you yeah. said everybody on the internet. You were saying that to say something. Everybody on the internet oh, thinks yeah. they know something. My bad. So everybody <laughs> on the internet bring it back, thinks though. they know something about everything. Mm-hmm. And we also tend to minimize where we were dumb. Mm-hmm. And only highlight where we were great. Yeah. Uh, there's a term I learned recently called uh, vir- virtue si- signaling. Okay. Virtue signaling. Mm-hmm. It's when you like. Um, it might not correctly apply. Hold on. Let me look up virtue signaling. Virtue signaling. I've never heard of that. Virtue sig- si- signaling. Virtue. Listen, we. Virtue. How are we host together? <laughs> Our mouths can't get right. Is. <laughs> Got two people who got stupid mouths. Uh, there be some words I can't put together. Virtue yeah. signaling is one. The action or practice of publicly expressing opinions or sentiments intended to demonstrate one's good character or the moral correctness of one's position on particular issues. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, here's how I am so great and so smart. I, I did this. I did that. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. At their expense. I tend to do that. I mean, we all do. Yeah. Right. Um, but we all, I, I also be like, and here's where I was dumb. Yeah. Here's why I was bad built. Because I think the humanity <laughs> of a person is better than the perfection of them. <laughs> a, well, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I hope that, like you said, that she's able to take this pain and make a profit, but in a respectable way, like coming out with the product, yes. like with some lash glue, some hair, uh, like real hair adhesive, yeah. something that'll make a, <laughs> some money. And then she can sell it with ship station. And uh, with ShipStation, you're able to sell stuff online and uh, you're able to pull it from different places. So she were to sell it on Etsy. Amazon. She was selling on Amazon, her own site. Shopify. Yeah. If she had if she had her site, uh, GorillaGlueGirl.com. That's what getting you too, Gorilla Glue. I can't do it. Gorilla G. I say Gorilla Glue Triple Girl. G. Even ShipStation, I stumbled over, but I was like, it's yeah, still it's did. still like solid though. Y'all knew what I'm saying. Yep. I tripped right into the station. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> but let me tell you about ShipStation. It really makes selling online so much easier um, because ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from all of your sales channels faster, cheaper and more efficiently. Import orders from um, any sale items, ships with any carrier and you have ex- access to discount shipping rates. Automate just about any shipping tasks. And you spend less time on shipping and a lot uh, more time growing your business. I know that this second drop of Mama Likes, mm-hmm. I am using ShipStation because we're selling more. Yeah. And there will be so many things that need to be put together. I can't do that. Listen, I'm using it for my stage crew uh, windbreakers. Uh-huh. Uh, one thing I, I, I ain't going to do is stress. And it can be stressful. And if you have no system, it'd be like, bro, I don't know what to do. It'd be like, I'm not going to. There was times before I found ShipStation. Oh, oh, why can't I say it? There, there's a time before I found ShipStation that I was like, I just won't sell merch. Because it was such a headache. <laughs> it, it, The fulfillment process alone, just for Mama Likes, had me stressed. Yeah. I was like, and that was just 300. We going to 1,000 this time. We talking 1,000, We going to 1,000 this time. So, like, yeah. I'm definitely going with ShipStation. You'll get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, USPS, and easily compare carriers and choose the best solution every time. With ShipStation, small business can now access access the same rate using reserved, uh, usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. 
It's no wonder ShipStation has more five-star reviews than any other shipping software. So ship more in less time. Just use our offer code CREW. CREW with a K. Yes, with a K to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in crew, crew. that's shipstation.com and enter the offer code K R E W crew. crew make ship happen. And when you're making stuff happen, sometimes you need to find a way to have a wholesome meal, all right? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that when you're busy entrepreneurs hosting a podcast, shipping off merchandise. Well, Green Chef wants to make it easier for you. Mm -hmm. Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal kit company. Enjoy clean ingredients you can trust seasonally sourced for peak freshness ingredients come pre-measured perfectly portioned and mostly prepped so that you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home cooked meals green chef makes eating uh eating well easy and affordable with plans to fit every lifestyle whether you're keto paleo vegan vegetarian or just looking to eat healthier there's a range of recipes to suit any diet or preference let me tell you what i don't like to do right now what's that angel it's come up with what to eat Mm, It it, it makes me so (laughs) mad. At the end of the day, when I have been dealing with kids in virtual school, I've been dealing with Amar, who's over here trying to wreck my life, Mm -hmm. editing, trying to come up with new content, producing. The last thing I want to do is figure out what meal I'm producing. Yeah. And this is why Green Chef is the bomb, because they already have it figured out for you. Everything's already pre-measured. All you got to do is just follow directions. Not having to go into your seasoning cabinet and look in there for five minutes for paprika. They already put it in a box they for you. They put it in a box. Okay. What's in a box? What's in, paprika the box? in the box? Yes. And because y'all know I'm on WW, mm-hmm. I got to be eating good. Okay. Because them points be mattering. The points mm-hmm. matter. And that's what I like about Green Chef. I'm able to get things that fit it within the lifestyle that I'm trying to live on my journey to healthiness. Amen. All right. Okay. Now, Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, all offsetting 100% of Offset. its direct woo, woo. carbon emissions and plastic packaging <laughs> in every box. So you can feel <laughs> great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. <laughs> Keep going out and doing great, sweetie. He's just a mess. Go to (laughs) greenchef.com slash SK90. SK90. And use the code SK90. SK90. To get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, go to greenchef.com SK90. SK90. It should be slash SK90, excuse me. And use code SK90. SK90. To get $90 off, including free shipping. Thank you, Green Chef. Thank you, Green Chef. Thank you, all our sponsors. Sponsors, descriptions in Discord for Patreon. In the description, um, video bit. Okay. <laughs> this just in. Mm-hmm. Becca, my cousin, call her Bex. Uh-huh. That's what white people call people. Yeah, yeah, Becca. Yeah. Hey, Bex. Hey, Bex. Hey. Bex, we're going to Orange Theory. Yeah. Uh, Gorilla Glue hairdo lady, Tessica Brown, is flying to LA. A plastic surgeon named Dr. Michael Obang has offered oh. to remove her helmet for free. Don't do that. Lengthy procedure estimated... At $12,500. Well, that's oh, that GoFundMe. That's the GoFundMe. She yeah. still got 500 for the flight. No, he's doing it for but free. But he's doing it for free. But he's that's what they could have paid for. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now she, uh, he said it will take two to three days to completely get her hair rid of Gorilla Glue. Uh, but he's going to do it for free. Oh, well, praise. Come on. He was like, here's some free press. Let and he do- said he can remove it without using medical grade glue remover. And she's up 13 k She's living- At this point... <laughs> She came out on top. Listen, if you if you don't waste it on a lawsuit, Mm-mm. I'd flip into an influencer career because she's in her fanny. Yeah. The she, way she tried to wash it in the thing, CC, I was like. I with see. them blue contacts? Maybe that's what she could come out with. Color contact line. Color contact. And you could go back to what you used to look like at UK. Yes. Hers seemed bigger, though. Her, listen, mm. eyelashes. <laughs> they were like spiders <laughs> on her face. Remember all the old VW bugs? Not the old, the new ones that came out. You used to put the lashes yes, on them. That's, that's what it looks like. It was. That's what it looked like. I was definitely like, okay. Hey okay, man, well, look at God. Look how God just used us to bless her. <laughs> <laughs> so in other news. In other news. We told our Patreon about this. So if you haven't seen the documentary, 
Spoiler alert. Me, spoiler, spoiler. Baby, one more time. <laughs> Britney <laughs> Lynn Spears uh, has a... Uh, conservatorship. Conservatorship. Oh, baby, baby. So I didn't know that documentary. was. Uh, I didn't either. I didn't know it was called that. I didn't. I thought a con- conservatory was you put birds and stuff in there. Oh. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Conservatory. Or, yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, what, she living in the birdhouse? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Britney Spears... Um, who's Dang. been famous since I was 16, I believe, 15 or 16. I remember uh-huh. when she came out. That dog on Hit Me Baby One More Time was Dang. a smack. I wish I had a music oh, cue. Every time we said her name, just... Something wasn't right here. Oh, baby, baby. How could you let you go? That song was a smash. Super mega I smash. I must confess. Show me how you put it to me. Baby. Baby. Let's do a what? It's killing me. And I. I we both is going to go for the lead. <laughs> it's in our personality. <laughs> we both go <gonna laughs> jump. We're both we going to have no temptation. We both David Ruffin. <laughs> Nobody come see you. Nobody come to see you. Can't see me. Somebody gotta go back. Ain't gonna be me. Yoda's going back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we have watched over the years. Britney rise to the yes. highest levels of fame. Probably the worst levels of paparazzi. Mm-hmm. I think, bro, the worst. Okay, and then uh, some mental health issues. Yes, before it was popular to protect your mental health, which is only like three five, to five years. I was going to say five times. Three to five years. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because when she was having her issues, people just Britney Spears crazy. Britney Spears crazy. Not taking into account people literally driving her crazy. Like I would lose it. Yeah. And I yeah. like being popular and all that. People follow me around everywhere. I would lose my... I would be so frustrated. Yeah. You can't do anything. She's going to the gas station. They're like, Brittany, 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 Brittany. Uh, I don't even know my kids call me that. Bro, paparazzi (laughs) are the armpit of the industry. Oh, they're the... No, they're the ball sweat. They're the... the, uh, Right in your legs. Yep. Where your balls and your like leg meet. Why do you say balls like it? Balls. You, you know your ball. You if you walk <laughs> and it's hot and you put your finger down there and smell it, you'd be like, "Ew, what are you doing?" People don't do that. I mean, no, not uh, regularly. Nobody smell. You see, we'd be like, Ooh. "So you can catch I a whiff without the, yeah, having I don't the, the need scratch. The, you don't need the scratch and sniff. I don't need it on my hand. Yeah, I don't need it either." <laughs> So anyway, they're the crevice. They're the nutsack thigh crevice, okay? So anyway, uh, see, it's 2020, 2008 or nine. I don't remember exactly. Um, eight. After, eight? Uh-huh. after she years. hit the paparazzi's uh, truck, shortly after she hit the paparazzi's truck with her umbrella, and she had lost custody of her kid, uh, she was <clears throat> put under a conservatorship which is basically usually used for elderly people or mentally incapacitated people. Uh Not usually people as young as Britney Spears. Right. Uh, Where somebody else manages your finances and your person. Yes, right. your person. Which is crazy. That is... I I was like, you... What? Your person? What does that even mean? Right. Basically mean her dad legally by a court in California controls her movements. Yeah, everything. Everything. So under that... She mm. actually still had some commercial success. She had her Vegas residency, released an album, circus something, toured, and all that stuff. But as of lately, according to the Britney Spears episode on the New York Times thing, has been trying to get out of it. <clears throat> Free Britney. Free Britney. Free Britney. Free Britney. Free Britney. First of all, there's a whole podcast dedicated, dedicated. to her Instagram. Yes. What is it called? What would they say? It's a... Uh... Ah, because they say it's the happiest place on the internet. I just don't remember what the the name of it what was. The tag the podcast? Was? Yes. Hold on, let me look it up. It was being Brittany. Ah, oh, what was that? The two white girls were like, we just decided to make a podcast, dis- dissecting all of Britney Spears' Instagram posts. We just make podcasts about anything, don't we? Lit- that's a literally. It's called Britney's Gram. Gram, yes. Brit- dissecting Gram. her Instagram. Because apparently there was like some cryptic messages in, in her, her post, in her, her personal post. post that are always asking to be free. Damn, they got thirty six thousand followers on their on their YouTube. I mean, on their Instagram. Thirty. They just were in a whole uh, documentary. Yeah, I wonder how much it grew in the past oh, two weeks. Oh man, because everybody was talking about this. So my first thought to you, Angel, <clears throat> before the Britney thing, 
Well, actually, Britney first. Come on. And then I want to know, Justin Timberlake also, he took a, his his image took another hit. Justin! And he wasn't even in this doc that long. He wasn't. No, <laughs> On Twitter, they made it seem like a portion was about him. And I was like, mm, Justin Timberlake slander. I'll see what's That's why I was, I played 2020 Experience one more time just to be, just to <laughs> just be just safe. To be, I wanted to like, clock in Strawberry Bubblegum a couple extra plays. <laughs> just one just more time. Just to be safe. Just one more time. So, Angel, your thoughts as an industry professional, a mother and fan of Justin Timberlake. Um, about Justin or about Britney? Britney. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, it there it made me definitely see her a little bit in a different light. During the time that all this was going on, it felt like you know, because there are some people who love paparazzi, and I'm yes. sure at one point in time she did enjoy the yes. attention. Yes. Um, and then when everything started to go south, it wasn't like I had a big opinion about it because I wasn't on Britney like it. I was just like, ah, oh girl, wildin'. That's yeah. pretty much. <laughs> That's black folk. Hey, your girl. Ooh. Yeah, she anyway. she wildin' out. Um, I didn't realize like. Like to see it in such a like succinct amount of time. Yeah, I'm like, well, yeah, I see why she would have went crazy. Absolutely. If that's what you know, if that's what happened, I can see how that much pressure, having that many people talk about you out loud, yep. having people constantly in your face, having your family fall apart in front of your very eyes, and there's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it, and then going into a hospital and coming out and no longer having any say. Right. over anything yeah. like we actually have a situation in my family it's not a conservatorship but uh it's like guardianship over an adult mm-hmm. um that's so i was like oh white people get conservative when there's money it's conservatorship when everybody broke is the state is like you got to take care of old dude because we can't do it no more <laughs> angel I was like, oh, is that what that the rich check. is that what the rich white people call it? Conservatorship? We just call it SSI. <laughs> you know, you, you get the SSI on the first and the 15th. Yeah. And somebody got to make sure you get take care of his bills. Right. Take take care of him. Take care of him. So that also was like a oh, but it's a shame that the system has made it so difficult for someone who is under a conservatorship to be able to get out of it. Yes. I was just like Lo- Especially if you sign up. Apparently she agreed to it. Which makes it really hard. She agreed to her father. Is that what she they agreed said? to? Yeah, that's what the documentary said. Oh, she I agreed, missed that part somehow. I don't know. Yeah, she agreed to it, which makes it way harder to get out of. Well, God dang. I don't know if she agreed to her father, but she agreed to a conservatorship, and that's when they were like, "Oh, girl, you said it. You said it. You and, said." And to have your to not be able to speak freely. Mm-hmm. That is the part. Like I can understand somebody having control over my money. Okay. Right. Um, especially if they're not able to just take and spend the money. If if somebody has control of it, fine. But to have control over who can see me, who can talk to me, Man. and what I can say to other people, and what jobs I can take. I just, uh, I've been independent for so long, and to have somebody make decisions for me like that, I would go even crazier. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, but it did also, watching the documentary took me back. You know I auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club. What has did Angel you not really? done? I did. Audition for the Mickey Mouse Club. I was obsessed, okay, with the Mickey Mouse Club. And then I remember that year, the year that they hired Justin, Christina, uh, Brittany, all of them. How long have you been, like... How <laughs> old are you? This is <laughs> where that joke works. No, I'm what? the same age as Britney Spears. Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> We're the same baby. age. <laughs> uh, did they take any blocks? They did. They did. They did. They took one black girl. And there was a black dude that was already on the show. Oh. But I remember going to the Omni Hotel in Cincinnati to audition. Omni oh, yeah. Hotel. Wow. Was, when Omni I was a kid, that was, that was as legit as it could Come be. I've still never been to one. Oh, I was um, one in Atlanta when I was about Angel's age. I'd driven by a few. I'd be like, man, that was nice. <laughs> no, when oh. I was a kid, oh, okay, was it was say. just, no, no, it was just like, <gasps> It was an a, elevator in the middle. Yeah. With it, glass. It was fancy. It was fantastic. I remember practicing at home. Um, and I remember because pra- I knew they were going to have us dance because they danced. I was obsessed with the Mickey Mouse show. Oh, my gosh. So I was practicing my dance moves in the... I hadn't been in any formal dance training as of yet. Were you was doing like, that? I was... <laughs> <laughs> go, Mickey. Go, Mickey. Go. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. And I... Um, I remember auditioning and then them being like, okay, we want you to come back. And uh, I sang, and then they were like, we're going to have you come back and um, 
dance. And I remember getting so nervous. And this is how I know I blew it. Because they played the exact song I had been practicing to. Mm -hmm. But there was a girl beside me who had had dance training. A black girl who had on a matching outfit. She had on like a leopard print biker shorts. Leopard print top. Leopard print headband. And her uh, perm was fresh. Curled under. (laughs) And I had on this Bill Cosby sweater and leggings. Because I was a little thick little thing. (gasps) Okay, so I wasn't about to wear no crop top. The contrast of those two outfits. <laughs> Angel was like walking over. She looked in. She was like, oh, my God. I was like, mm. I wasn't even smiling. I was so mad. I was she was like, crying. She was like, you knew you was because of the sweater leggings? Yes. I was like, this girl got a whole matching outfit on. They didn't like, tell us we had to do that. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I look so homely right now. And she over here. Look at all kids. So yeah, it was just act when the this is all y'all get. Wouldn't even smile. Wouldn't even smile. You got in your head, Angel. Oh, I did. I blew it. I blew it. I could have oh, been in Florida at Buena Vista Park singing. They had a lot of them kids on that show. Was it Ryan Gosling? Uh huh. Ryan Gosling, Brittany, Justin, Christina. Yeah. Was JC on there? Yes. Should I say? Yes. He actually was always my favorite from NC. He was good. He I was thought JC was going to have an equal career to Justin Timberlake. No, I knew he wasn't. Justin was the guy. Justin was my guy. Somebody said on Twitter, uh, I think Josh said this to me, we done let uh, Justin d- uh, damage Jan and Brittany, that ramen hair demon. <laughs> 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 now listen, in my mind, in retrospect, the, I didn't. It didn't click click to this documentary that the Cry Me a River girl was Britney. Well, no. really? I mean, it, it did, but it didn't click how damaging that was. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah, because this song was River. a smash. Yeah, dude. he was because it wasn't damaging in the black community. We were just like, oh That's yeah, they broke up. Literally, I mean, because we would have did the same thing. One of our favorites <laughs> would have did it if uh, Whitney would have made a song about. Bobby and had yeah. him uh, it heartbreak up there. Yeah, we would have been like, yup. But I, if that's what I'm the fallout, I was literally there. Like, oh, that boy, Justin Crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I got <laughs> number three, like, we don't, when you got to work, you ain't really got time to, to, to it, watch the fallout. No, so no, apparently no. There was career fallout. First of all, let me back up. Back it up, back it up. The dog on Star Search dude. That was so cr- just this creepy, Nick Creeperson. Like, Brittany was like, what, eight or something? She was so young. And he's like, do you have a boyfriend? She was like, oh, uh, what? No. What if it was me? I was like, that yuck. That was so Disgusting. nasty. What was that dude's name? Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. I was like, why are you doing that? Why? I was like, yuck, bro. And the, even the little boy was like, <laughs> he's like, like, why would you even ask a kid that? Even prior to like Me Too and stuff, like. It's First the, of all, she just sang. Right. Oh, and her so singing is, as a child. Her <laughs> oh, is a river. You walk across. <laughs> I said, girl, you done growled? She, she had been, Britney Spears had been through something before she was just, I said, they don't teach that girl just anywhere. And where was that? It hit me, baby. Hit me, baby, one more time. That's what I did. Oh, baby, baby. Come on, where she came out of? Louisiana? Louisiana. Oh, baby, baby. Every time they showed her singing. <laughs> she was. <laughs> Girl, if you growl any louder than that, you gonna blow our ears out. Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have let you go. I'm a slave for you. (laughs) No star search. Why does all the celebrities though have these star search performances? All of them. It was all losing. <laughs> no, none of them. All ever losing. Won. Beyonce and them the lost. Give it up for the hip hop rapping girls time. <laughs> Two stars. <laughs> I'm like, where are they finding these? T- I'm so glad I don't have a star search Man. for somebody to pull up when they do my story. Look at Angel lose. I'm glad that Mickey Mouse <laughs> audition. <laughs> right next to the girl. <laughs> My mom give me an oh, yeah. to sing. I'm not uh, I'm not I hate my you. outfit. Yeah, any tapes I have of performances, they're all good. And I'm going to send them to Legacy Box 
so that I can uh, the have them digitized. You jerk. <laughs> you jerk. We're all fun? together in on a joke as yes. friends. Yes. I know <laughs> she just hit us with the right hook. Legacy Box is an ingenious mail-in service to have all your irreplaceable moments trapped uh, on VHS tapes, camcorders, film reels, and pictures converted to DVD or digital. This is why I'm trying to figure out if that's what they're doing with this SAR search they might, stuff. They have to. Because how are they able to get these performances? I, I, if, you're, if Mama Dorothy tell me, Kev, I done found the tapes. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm walk. I, listen, Legacy Box, you can mail it in. I'm walking it in. <laughs> well, Just to make sure. I want an ace. Oh yeah! I want to see Angel in the leggings in the Cosby suit in the Cosby with, sweater, with no, it? with no headband, <laughs> crying inside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with Legacy Box, you can digitize all of these great moments and embarrassing moments for your family uh, memories and put them together in a modern digital format that is easy to use. I know for me, I actually do have a lot of, um, I am the person that keeps all of the family photos. Yeah. Like I am the historian. And that's one of the things that I've been wanting to do is be able to give everybody their own DVD of all the pictures, pictures of our grandmother, mm -hmm. great grandmothers, because once you lose that stuff, it's yeah. irreplaceable. You got them pictures when you was at the March on Washington and stuff, in the you know what I'm saying with uh, with Malcolm and stuff. Mm -hmm. You be like, you was pointing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, I want to see this. I was there color. with your hairline. Um, and so, oh, shit, so we dark. can have pictures of oh, that so too dark. and put it in Legacy Box, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can digitize that. Oh, uh, it's so great and easy. <laughs> So let me tell you the process from start to finish. Here's you pack and the send. <laughs> Their team digitizes everything by hand. <laughs> you enjoy over 850,000 families who have trusted them to digitally preserve their, their past. They have a team of over 200 trained technicians. <gasps> Rediscover your glory days by digitizing these irreplaceable heirlooms with Legacy Box. So this is what we want you to do. Go to LegacyBox.com slash SK to get an incredible 40% off your first order. <laughs> Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in whenever you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash SK and save 40% while supplies last. Yeah, yeah. Jeff said you, you cut me deep. Man. <laughs> Listen, you cut me. You deep. gonna keep sending me back into the past like I'm this old, like I'm an heirloom. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a tomato. <laughs> uh, so, um, here's the thing about Justin. Let me just pause on him. Please talk about him now. I don't feel like he quite ever atoned for Jan what he did to Janet Jackson. No. If Justin had just been like, my bad too. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like the world latched on to Janet, and he was like... I ain't jumping out there. <laughs> Literally the Homer Simpson into the bushes gym. <laughs> that was He was Justin. like, well, you're doing such a great job taking all the blame. Yeah. I don't want to... You know, know, you're a strong black woman. Yeah. You're independent. Yeah. You gon' you, you you got it. You got that okay? Okay. Jan they didn't have another black artist on the Super Bowl for a, a minute. No. After that. He is the ripper. He did. He pulled it he off. He literally, he personally did the thing. He did. And I now, funny little aside, I used to watch the Super Bowl at church all the time. <laughs> That happened in the fellowship hall of my church. Oh, wow. I I didn't. Nobody knew what happened. It was quick. It was like, that a little nipple. Does that was a sun on it or yeah, something it like that? Yeah, it had a little paste paste on yeah. it. Yeah. So it's not like Janet was on this side of the stage and she was like, ah. Yeah. If that was the case, and he was like, girl, I, that was not part of the rehearsal. Right. But he literally was a 50-50 part of that. The ripper of said nipple yeah. thing. Nipplegate. Nipplegate. And he never was like, I apologize. We did this together. Let me have some of this blame. Right? right. And then also, he wasn't really held accountable. Yeah. Even by me. Oh, I no. hold you. I never stopped listening to Janet or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But her uh, image in the industry and all that, she took all of the heat. She took every single last bit of it. Every single... Now, I... Did not stop like liking and loving Janet. I was just like, no. she's got great boobs. That's <laughs> that's pretty much all I got from black that. Girls, we listen. They don't even they be girl black women. They be like, girl, your titties, and they'll hit them. <laughs> yeah, like, girl stuff. Do it again. <laughs> I've seen when listen to her homegirl. Girl, your butt big. Smack it, yes. grab it. Okay, thighs. Smack them. Absolutely. Titty pop pop. We gonna pre 
appreciate all of it. Oh, they all getting dressed together and you can smell hair and stuff. <laughs> There's a lot. Going. There's a lot going on. I definitely, I think the biggest thing was, I was like, what was that on her nip? I was like, are we supposed to be wearing those on our nipples? <laughs> like, is that what we supposed <laughs> to be doing under our clothing? Ah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Justin never, ever said anything. And I'm not sure if that was just, you know, being cowardice or being young and stupid yeah. or what it was. But yeah, he definitely took an L definitely for black folk. I don't think white folk here. They were like, what is this? Is he had nothing to do with it. For black folks though. I think not, and not by and large. Not listen, by and large. No, by and large. no, 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 no. But like uh, we definitely talked about it. Was like Justin. We did. We still bring it up. Anytime somebody bring it up. we do you remember when you pulled a boob out? You didn't say nothing, Justin. He, no, he, strawberry he, bubble gum. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the other thing. I recently found this out. I know everybody in it already knows this. I believe it was the Justified album. Mm, that was his uh first single solo album. Out solo album. Apparently, Pharrell had made all them songs for Michael Jackson. That was a, oh, oh wow. what? And Michael Jackson couldn't do the album because he was in that court stuff, mm-hmm. and he didn't want either. He didn't want or didn't do it. So Pharrell was just like, if you go back and listen to those songs and imagine Michael Jackson singing them, smash hits. Man, Michael Jackson on Senorita, bruh. Pharrell had made all those songs for Michael Jackson. I wonder if he wrote a lot of those too. He did. Oh my God. He did. Wow. And Michael couldn't do it or wouldn't do it. So Pharrell was like, Justin. Justin was like, thank, thank you, you, Black That's Jesus. the biggest love. Yeah. He got a so push take, a teeth verse. Bro, take Pharrell's music comp- composition, all that, out of Justin. Take Timbaland out of Justin. You know what you get? No way. Man in the Woods. Yeah. You get Man in the Woods. You get Man in the I saw Man in the Woods display in Target. I was like, what? You get Justin, Justin Timberlake from NSYNC presents Man in the Woods. Man yeah. in the Woods is what you get. Yeah. Justin said, after Man in the Woods, he was like, well, I'll be going back to the black. Um, Let me go Mr. Back Land, to Sir Timber? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, so... So for him to do that, that's where I feel like people was just kind of like, come on, man. Like, mm-hmm. where would you be? Right. right? Imagine if Mario... Had gotten Timberland plus Pharrell, he would still be Mario. He would still be Mario <laughs> because white folk. Uh, the thing about just the thing is, is that Justin was already going always going to have the white folk because he was in sync. Mm-hmm. And then when you got black folk, then it just skyrockets. Yeah, you. Melissa loves Justin Timberland. Man. Justin was my crossover. Was like, he? Yes, like by the time that Justin really became like like hot hot in these streets, I w- had already come into who I was as a black woman, and I said I'm only gonna be with a black king because I am a black queen. <laughs> However, if that Justin Timberlake crossed me, okay, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna have these uh, kids by this white man, okay. <laughs> Uh, he was my one and only crossover. And I'm like, why you keep messing up, Justin? Yeah. Ah, Justin to Blake. So I heard recently that he tried to apologize to Janet. Somebody later. said he released, a, uh, he released an apology. Somebody yeah, I don't out. remember that in real time. Uh, and I feel like uh, I heard Janet was like, nah, you good. You ain't staying with me when I needed you. Yeah. Don't come over that's here That's fair, man, because it's been a long time. Yeah. Because yeah. how, how long, long ago was that? What the the nipple gate? It was two thousand. So he was twenty four when it happened. Or I just never it was two thousand what two thousand. Like it was two thousand and four. Excuse me. Oh, was it really? So he was twenty four, twenty three when it happened. Dang. I was just always curious what part of the choreography required that for the last move. I don't me know too. what I it never, was supposed to that, look like. I never that, understood nobody that. Nobody has answered that. I was like, was like. Because to me, when I saw it, I thought it was a part of the... I still It thought, looks like it. Until people... Until there were press releases, I was like, I thought that was what was... That's why she had on a pretty nipple. Like, why else wear such a pretty... Yeah. <laughs> was Maybe like, it was just a real, like... You take off the black and it was the pink. Was there supposed to have been pink right there? Well, under her thing. Wasn't it like a black and pink thing she was wearing? I, don't I thought specific. it was all black leather that she had on. And then oh. it was the black sun on her um, yeah. nipple. So I was just like, yeah, this is what's... A, no, everybody mad. No, it's not no. supposed to happen. Okay. And again, she got great boobs. Uh, the, <clears throat> but yeah, he was 24 or 23 because it was 2004. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so anyway, when he did that, then with Britney, she had a great fallout from her stuff. And it was just her. She just had compounded, compounded yeah. stuff. And yeah. now... Uh, when I be watching her, the Instagrams they show on that documentary, I was like, man, give her her stuff back. Man. She looked because the conservatorship. Did you see the part where the guy was like, 
the business of her is good. I deserve a raise. Like, yeah. hold on now. That don't sound conservatorship. Yeah, that, no, no. That sounds like you managing a brand like well, even, even the commentary was like, a conservative ship should never be that lucrative to where people are asking for raises within right. the conservative yeah. ship. Like, yeah. you, can't, that, you ain't getting no raise for your uncle over there. Like, <laughs> Why hey, you doing you good? didn't just put it on somebody. Oh, you yeah. like your uncle. You know what? black people. Just be, you don't even be uncle. If you're a certain amount of age is older, look, that's Uncle Pete. That's Uncle Pete from Soul Food. Uh, yes. But it's, I, it doesn't, even learning of it just yesterday or uh-huh. it's how it worked, it doesn't seem like in theory it should be, I'm the CEO of the conservative ship and the conservative ship has a Vegas residency. Absolutely. It seems wrong. But you know, people do that on the, these lower levels. People be taking in kids just to get the check. Yeah. Just to spend the money. They do. So you you take it from whatever, however many little thousands or hundreds people are getting when they take in folk and yeah. have the uh, social yeah. security check and then make it millions. Yeah. If it's not somebody that really has your best interest at heart, they're going to take advantage of you. And that's the thing that is confusing to me about the conservatorship is that there is nothing there to protect the conservatee. To mm-hmm. be taken advantage of by the person who has conservatorship over them. And the conservatorship person who is the, you know, conservator, it's in his best interest to, even if you just manage their likeness. Yeah. That's lucrative. Yeah. Britney Spears just released, if she released free Britney merch, mm-hmm. right now. It goes they, stupid. Millions of dollars. Yeah. And he gets, I think they said he gets one point something percent uh-huh. of oh all merch, God. all sales. All everything, anything. And she was making a million a week, 300K per night on her residency. She worked four nights a week. Yeah. A million, by the way, my goal in life. Come tell me. Is to get so big that I can just have a Vegas residency and be like George Wallace. He came down from that penthouse. He comes down, does his 10 o'clock show. And goes right, right back. Bro, you fly out of Van Nuys. Thursday, I back went Sunday, to Monday, literally Monday. boys to men. Mm-hmm. I was flying to Vegas one time. I ran into Sean uh, Stockman, mm-hmm. and he was leaving on a Thursday. I was like, "Oh man, what are you doing?" For a super nice dude, he's like, "Yeah, we got the weekend shows here, man." He, he didn't say all this, but his attitude Absolutely. was like, "Bro, it's three, four shows, and I'm gone." And that's it. And he, you know, flying out of Burbank is easy already. Oh, oh you my walk God. Over, you park your car on the runway. That, 45 <laughs> yes. minutes. Literally. Literally. That's pretty much what you're doing. Bro, security <laughs> takes five minutes. Literally five minutes. In COVID. He goes to dog on McCarran Airfield, get out, perform Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You back home Monday morning? It's, uh, you ain't learned no new songs. <laughs> not not no. now. Not now. Not putting now out song. new songs. I'm working on new songs. Yeah. You don't even have to sing boy. the songs. Everybody else is going to sing them in the audience. Listen, you could just be like, I've seen their it's show. so. That's what they did. Got six <laughs> more. Cue it up, It was DJ. cool. Me and my boy was there. It was cool until he brought out the roses. Then I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Nobody speaking of the Super Bowl, Britney Spears praying for you. Love you. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Super Bowl? No. You and Marcus don't believe in that because Kaepernick and all that? My husband ain't watched Super Bowl in about five years. Okay. Did you hear about The weekend's performance? The weekend's performance? No. I saw that he spent a lot of money on it. The week, that's all I don't know where that seven M's uh, went, though. Let me tell you that. The weekend spent. You said you don't know where, I don't it, went know where it went to. I'm not a fan of The, the weekend. You're not? No. Kev loves it. Oh, he makes you do that too? Oh. Me too. His, I don't want to get blocked by anybody else on Twitter. His uh, music the weekend feels, is not like, looking it for feels like music that's great for people who take dr- a lot of drugs. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he'd be on that he, cocaine. No, he yeah. was saying he was the first artist to have a Coke and Pepsi halftime show. That is right. What happened? <laughs> You're so stupid. Never. What, what happened? happened? <laughs> you are stupid, so but that's right. All, he spent seven million of his own dollars. Didn't get paid. Nobody ever gets paid. Nobody gets paid for, for the Super Bowl. It is the greatest advertising pitch to yourself, mm-hmm. and it's also a credibility. Uh, not a credibility. It's like a seal of approval that yes. you are a megastar. Absolutely. A lot of people want to, but very few artists. Get to do a halftime show. A halftime show. Not national anthem, which her did amazing. Not uh or no, she sang Star Pet Spangled Banner. Jasmine Sullivan and Eric. Her Kirsten. killed the star. Her killed. Man. Her killed. Jasmine killed. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't like how Eric. I wish her and and Jazz got that. Like, I wish Jazz would have just sang Hotels. I was like, who who is the person that's singing with her? Is that the the uh, reference track? That's why I, I was like, are those the reference vocals? <laughs> I was so confused. That was, but um, he had a humongous set. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, he had lights and he had a football field worth of dancers. So I could easily see how he spent $7 million. All that rehearsal. Man. Rehearsal space. Sound stages. Sound stage. You set design. Build. The COVID. How you build a the set? COVID protocol for all that? COVID protocol for all them. Listen, keep your distance comedy is expensive just for COVID. <laughs> just for the audience and the Just comedians? for the 12 people and 20 people. And he had millions. By the way, do you be feeling like we be li living in the different parts of the United States? Yes. Yes. In yes. LA, you can't go nowhere. Bro. The Super Bowl was packed. Tampa was up. Tampa was like, They were like, we then? are outside. There's no vid. Cough, what cough, then? achoo. We're outside. There was a million <laughs> people on the field for the uh, halftime show. Man. After the game, it was cross-pollination. They are like, no, nope, we're good. Well, it's Florida. Florida ain't had COVID. That's true. Florida was like, boy. Yeah. Hush. They're like, what? COVID? You, what? <laughs> we just doing what we want to do. Yeah, they're not, they're not here for all this whatever people are calling it. They're like, no, pandemic. No. So Panda apparently, Express. I've been talking to some comedians. They'd be like, bro, the South is wide yeah open yes wow i'm scared to go over there man i have no interest until i get that <laughs> get that vaccine that backy so anyway also something happened on the super bowl which is one of my worst fears uh oh tony romo was <laughs> trending mm -hmm. because they thought he had a pee stain during his super bowl can you close that door josh i can't I'm, I'm it is. It. it was definitely a peace thing. This week. That's loud. I'm scared. Ah. Liz, Liz. The speaker. Liz. <laughs> she said. Mm, she walking away. <laughs> she walking. I was scared. like, no. Ah. He's like, I am scared. Mm. Yes, he's scared. Mm. Jason, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I mean, I can hear Jason clear. I, I was like, Jason, how is Juju? Is he good? I like it. Oh, my goodness. I'm seeing the weekend's performance now. Wow. I will say, though, yeah. the, the pyro cues Listen. at the end were phenomenal. I'm going to pull it, it up. It was a good performance. The angels in the city, like the the, the the people in the robes inside the city skyline type of deal. Yes. Yeah, that's Somebody amazing. said that was the most mass worn in Florida ever was his, his dancers with them that got. <laughs> That gauze on. on oh, that's ooze. a whole. That's a whole nother. On the ooze. You see the timing of the, of the fireworks? Yeah. Yes. Ooh, out of his shoulder. I wonder, how do you rehearse that? I don't know. Somebody got paid a lot of money to do that on that ooh. He looks a, a, a bit of a mess. I no, I know there was cardboard people, guys, but there was also real people next to the people in, in the cardboard. In the field, guys, the dancers. Yeah, there was also 25,000 people at the Super Bowl. I think their stage stadium holds like 60 or 70K. But anyway. I'm confused. I, I, I'm, I'd be confused by his... I'm, well, first of all, I'm glad that those locks are no longer yeah. a, a part of his image. But I am confused on... What he's going for? I want artistic, know. Like, artistically. Yeah, like uh, style wise, what he's going for. That yeah. was part it of the same direction his entire album. The red vibe, uh, uh, even the when bloody face, even when he was inside with the with the lights and stuff. That was from the music video. That okay. was pretty much like a recreated set from that. He gives me. Uh, it reminds oh, that's me. what it was. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. See, me neither. I, but I don't know. I, I don't, don't. I listen. I don't keep up with Abel. I do. But apparently. <laughs> Apparently, he owns his masters. Well, come on then. I am Which happy. made me a fan. I am happy for him. He had $7 million to spend, and he owns his masters. And listen, art is to be consumed and, and liked and disliked. Mm -hmm. He don't need me to be a huge fan of him. I don't think he, he's kept up at night being like, you know what, guys? If I could just get Kevin, Kevin Angel. I, he de we're definitely not his demographic. I can tell you, he's hoping that we're not like, this is the <laughs> He's like, well, I need to go back to the drawing board. Right. If, if we ever are like, me and Angel are like, the week is new project. I like it. He's like, I've fallen off. It's, it's time for me I to retire. Like yeah. We're definitely not in his demographic. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the thought of something that I, I artistically want to make that is going to not live past the day that I do it for real. And spending seven million on it. But see, him. I disagree. Because here's the thing: certain Super Bowl performances are so iconic they live on in legendary history. 
Whitney Houston's Super Bowl, uh, her national anthem. National anthem. Her national anthem, which she didn't spend $7 million. I was about to say, she spent nothing. They sold her singing it. Mm. And I think it went like platinum. Uh, yeah, oh it's God. the best ever. It is the best ever. She had the sweat on that lip. Oh, yeah. Okay, the jumpsuit, which Jasmine Sullivan wore to rehearsals. Michael Jackson's Super Bowl performance. His is crazy. Yeah. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Bruno's. His fantastic. And he brought out Beyonce. Beyonce. Bro. And it's Beyonce. That opening shot. Dude. Where you're on the field with Beyonce and the lights go up behind her as she, man. Mm -hmm. And she rolled that right into her tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is the biggest marketing thing because he announced his 2021 tour after that. Mm -hmm. Eight billion dates. Oh, he he announced his store. Yes. Oh, on, okay. On Twitter. Okay, that is Next making year. more sense. Next year, mm -hmm. right? He's selling tickets a year in advance. That's Somebody <laughs> tweeted, a quote tweeted, and was like, "Well, he know that we don't." I mean, the dates can get pushed, but always. If you're a weekend fan, you're in. If you didn't know about him, you're like, huh? Or you're just like, huh? But either way, Ooh. <laughs> that's the greatest representation of him as an artist he can he can ever have. Mm -hmm. So I, if you know, if I could, I would, if I had seven million to spend, I'm like, bro, I'm about to advertise myself to the world. I would, I would, if I was a musician, I would go ham. I would be using honey coupons. <laughs> would not, I Angel. Guess, I drive out there in my Lexus truck and sing into the thing. Just whipping. I'd be like, can y'all hear me? Okay. Prince had a good one too. Let me tell you what. A part of my life, I was just so mad. I would. This was when I still watched the Bros at the church. The Prince. Super Bowl, they was like, we, you know, we can't let this happen in the church. So you, we turn it off the halftime show. Y'all can go outside and throw the football. We'll turn the game back on. I was <sighs> like, but oh. this is on network television. Uh. Like y'all didn't grow up listening to Prince. Oh my gosh, that I just can't. makes me mad, bro. And this was and before God YouTube soul. was good. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, but I want to. I was uh, looking forward to this. I we can't. couldn't watch it on our phone. It was just they said no. They they just turned it off. Uh, and I was just like they rolled the TV away. <laughs> I was like, I, I have been like, can we go home? Can I watch this at home, please? I uh, want to see it. Yeah, I just oh, that that just irritated me as if I was there with you. <laughs> and Angel saw it. <laughs> <laughs> that like, irritated. I was an adult. What? what? Yes. What? And you didn't leave. I was I gonna go? I was gonna miss the game if I left. You should have known already they were gonna let y'all see know. it. Then you should have pushed that TV up out of the sanctuary and been like, "Don't worry, we won't do it in the church. We'll have it in the parking lot." Two thousand seven. You were twenty. Uh, twenty five. Mm, I gotta do the math. I was twenty seven. You were twenty five. Twenty four. Oh, you were twenty four. I was a full grown adult and not yet a man. You were that Justin Timberlake. I was, age. I was just like, there ain't no way. Ain't no way. By that time, by 27, I was already like, y'all, y'all tripping. But that was 24, though. I know. I'm saying in that same year. Yeah, but you was in the same year of your, you wasn't in the same year of my life. I know. Yo, Cat in the chat said, I can't watch football at church. I cuss too much. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> also, by the way, I, 24, I was NFL, with you. NFL season, also, I, I have, I've been kind of I, I'm apathetic towards the NFL. That was the first football game I watched. Oh. After the Kaepernick one. stuff. I, the worst at first, I was angry. I'm boycotting, mm -hmm. and I felt like, yeah, man. But they, what's worse for the NFL <laughs> is apathy. I literally like have just lived my life. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm aware of like stuff here and there because I'm on the internet all the time. Mm -hmm. But I used to be an NFL Sunday ticket. I used to have three fantasy football leagues. I used to oh, manage one. Guy. I was all in, mm -hmm. and then I wasn't. And I was just all oh, cool. Like, I didn't even know Rob Gronkowski was still playing. I was like, wait, I thought he retired. Like, I'm that. I think he did, but he can't. Well, He's back now. Same, same way how Brady did, I guess. I didn't know Antonio Brown. Remember, of this beginning of this year, he was doing all kind of ridiculous stuff. Now he was in the Super Bowl. I was like, he got what? a ring after yeah. all that. Yeah, I didn't know none of that stuff. I ain't never been into nobody's NFL, so it don't make me know. Never mind. I used to only <laughs> turn on the Super Bowl to see the halftime show if it was an artist I care about. Really? Yes. If I didn't care about the artist, mm -mm. Madonna's I only barely watched. And seeing oh. after I saw her do that cartwheel, I said, oh, I that's when you know. I actually look forward to that age, to the age where I'm performing. I'm like, I'm going to do a cartwheel because that's what's hot. <laughs> I said, oh, Betty. No, oh, you my just. God. But yeah, no, I don't watch the ball. 
Well, well, that's about it. That was a good show. That was a good show. I love this podcast. I love you all. Uh, make sure to get the Capital State Studios app. Make sure to please get Durant tickets to Tony Baker and Friends. See Kev perform this Friday. new material. This Friday, all new material from Kev and a set from me. Uh, Doing a full Tony, set? Yep. I guess I Ira Rodriguez. Tony Eric Griffin. Rock. Eric Griffin. Tony Rock. Tony Baker. Tony. World's greatest comedian. Baker. Uh, who else is on there? I'm missing one person. I had a Tony me. Gina Yashere. Mm, Gina. Gina Yashere is mm, a big comedian. Gina. <laughs> and Tony did not put me on the flyer. He will pay. Well, you made your own flyer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's more like, to come, though. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, you have a week of rollout of, of the flyer? Oh, uh, flyer. I love Petty Kev. Petty Kev is in the building. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we love you, Patreon. We'll see you guys on Friday He's for more. Day. Rest of the world, we'll He's see you on uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Uh, mm-hmm. Have a happy Valentine's Day. This is the last episode of the Challenge Show. We might have to take a week or two break because we're shooting more tomorrow on Wednesday or tomorrow on Thursday. Mm. Um, and new shows coming out on the app. About to start turning over. Mm-hmm. Kisha E got a show coming out. Angel got a new show coming out. Who are you shooting at? I shoot it on 18th. 18th? The new show's coming out. God bless you. Bye. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Here's another bang of fire. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another bang of fire. Uh. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.